Besides owning probably like a million mansions and a handful of countries, the royal family owns a lot more stuff. This is The Rich Life, I'm your host Michaela, and today I'll be telling you the top 10 things the royal family owns that you never knew about. And make sure to hit that like, comment, and subscribe button because it really helps us out. But now, let's get started. Number 10, Seven Year Old Cake. At Prince Louis Christening, held on July 9th, 2018, at St. James's Palace in London, the royal family served guests a cake from seven years ago. Gross. The treat may sound stale, but it's actually quite a sweet British custom. The fruit cake served was a saved tear from Prince William and Duchess Kate's 2011 wedding cake, and has been laced with brandy to last many years. A sentimental confection was also served at little Louis' siblings, Prince George and Princess Charlotte's christening, though it probably tasted a bit fresher at their ceremonies. Number 9, Swan Population. Queen Elizabeth enjoyed all manners of historic perks thanks to her position as monarch. One of the most unusual is that she had the right to own any swans swimming in open waters throughout the United Kingdom. I could go to Wales or any part of England or Scotland and say that swan belongs to Her Majesty and just take it. That would be it, says David Barber, who holds the ancient title of Royal Swan Marker. While many subsequent British monarchs used their right to cook and eat the birds at extravagant royal feasts, the Queen only flexed it to perform an annual census of the swan population on a river through an ancient process called swan upping that dates back to the 12th century. As noted by Cosmopolitan, Queen Elizabeth II owned the unclaimed swans that lived on the stretches of River Thames. But now that she has passed, they wouldn't just say that the swans belong to the country, now would they? Those swans are now in the king's possession as he ascended to the throne. Number 8, Any Board Game But Monopoly Back in 2008, Prince Andrew was presented with a board game Monopoly. The gift giver, however, likely didn't anticipate the royal's odd response to the kind gesture. We're not allowed to play Monopoly at home, Prince Andrew disclosed. Why, you may ask? Well, apparently it gets too vicious, which is kind of creepy to think about what happened in the past to have made it been not allowed at all. And you know, you'd think that they'd be used to owning places. Number 7, Jewelry Collection Throughout her reign, the Queen earned a reputation not only for devotion to the monarchy and her people, but also as one of the best dressed women of our time. None of the Queen's looks were complete without her jewelry, however. From gems passed down from Queen to Queen through the centuries to more recent acquired jewels. In the daytime, she was almost never seen without a pearl necklace, glittering brooch, and pearl earrings. For a formal evening event, a necklace or tiara were pulled out of the vault. Despite having access to a vast number of jewels, the Queen viewed them casually as being part of her uniform. Her sister, Princess Margaret, once marveled that Her Majesty was the only woman she knew who could put on her own tiara while walking down the stairs to attend an event. One of the most important jewels in the royal collection, the Queen's Diamond Diadem, featured on the two covers of British Vogue's April 2022 issue. The first was a 1957 portrait of the Queen wearing the crown estimated to be around $12 million, and the second captured Anya Taylor-Joy wearing a replica. According to Vanity Fair, her jewelry collection is called the Windsor Collection collection and has been passed down for generations. Her most famous jewels include the Sovereign Scepter, an orb used for her coronation. She also owned the Russian Kokoshnik tiara, Queen Mother's leaf brooch, Queen Victoria's diamond stud earrings, and Duchess of Tex earrings. Number 6, All the Dolphins in the United Kingdom Much like the swans, the Queen had a solid claim on many of the country's aquatic creatures. A statue from 1324, which originated during the reign of King Edward II, stated that, The King shall have wreck of the sea throughout the realm. Whales and sturgeons taken in the sea or elsewhere within the realm, except in certain places privileged by the king. The law still stands today and covers not just whales and sturgeons, but dolphins and porpoises too, when they are captured within three miles of the UK. Until recently, the crown also laid claim to the bulk of Scotland's wild crustaceans, but now that rests with marine Scotland. Safe to say it's pretty odd to own dolphins, but now they belong to the king. Number 5, Princess Diana's Letter Paul, one of Diana's former butlers, said that the princess predicted her own passing in a car crash. Apparently, she was so scared 10 months before her passing that she wrote to Paul saying that there was a plot made by a member of the royal family, and that her car brakes would be tampered with and she would suffer serious head injuries. And all of this would be so that the Prince of Wales could marry again. The letter she wrote read, I am sitting here at my desk today in October, longing for someone to hug me and encourage me to keep strong and hold my head high. This particular phase of my life is the most dangerous. My husband is planning an accident in my car, brake failure and serious head injury in order to make the path clear for him to marry Tiggy. Camilla is nothing but a decoy. So what do they do with this letter, you ask? Well, they keep it in a very safe place. Number four, the best seat in the house at Wimbledon. In 2010, Her Majesty stunned the crowd at Wimbledon when she showed up to watch Andy Murray play. It was the first time she'd attended the world famous tennis tournament in more than 30 years. She may not have been a regular spectator, but she would still command the best seat in the house, the Royal Box, which is tucked just behind the court's south baseline. There's a view among those who have attended the Royal Box that is one of the most special experiences in sport. Alexandra Willis, the head of communications content and digital 
Arsenal at the All England Lawn Tennis Club told the New York Times in 2017. It's because of the fact that it's by invitation only. You can't just decide it's something you want to attend. Though the Queen may have not been the biggest fan, the Duchess of Cambridge is a freaking fixture in the Royal Box. Number 3, Fort Belvedere. Now look, I'm sure you know that the Royal Family owns tons of properties, but you probably don't know all of them. And for the sake of time, I'll just be naming the one you probably didn't know. Because if I were to name them all, I would need a much bigger list than just 10. A part of the Windsor Estate, Fort Belvedere was built in the Gothic Revival style by English architect Geoffrey Wyattville in the 1820s. Most famously, the manor house served as the royal residence for Edward VIII, the Duke of Windsor, between 1929 and 1936. During his stay, the then prince renovated many of the rooms to include more contemporary details and added horse stables, a swimming pool, and tennis courts. It was there that Edward signed his written abdication notice, stripping him from his royal title and his home. A few others have lived in the manor house. Recently, rumors have started that the forgotten castle may become the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's official new home. Number two, the world's largest clear-cut diamond. Weighing in at 530.2 carats, the great star of Africa properly known as Kalinin I is the world's largest clear-cut diamond, or somewhere in the region of $51 million. In 1910, it and several other stones cut from a gigantic diamond unearthed in South Africa five years earlier were presented to Mary of Tech, the consort of George V and Elizabeth II's grandmother. Back in the UK, the diamond was incorporated into the sovereign scepter with the cross, the three-foot-long staff held by the monarch during their coronation. As such, the diamond is now part of the crown jewels, which technically remained under the ownership of the crown, but the royal family still had it first, I guess. Now coming in at number one, a tube of the queen's blood. The queen traveled all over the world, and sometimes found herself in environments where access to blood was difficult to attain. While the solution? She and her doctors brought along the queen's own blood, just in case she needed it. Clever. Weird. But clever, I guess. I mean, it's giving Megan Fox and MGK vibes, but you know, it's chill. Now that she's passed over, they must have just thrown her away, right? Oh no. She was the longest reigning monarch, so of course they didn't throw it away, and it's kept in a very special place. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.